guys. Welcome to the show. Let's see if I remember how to do this. It's been a minute. All right, we've got Spencer. It, no, yeah, it's been no. it's been since December. It's been two weeks. Yeah, I, I don't count Wednesday. That, that doesn't count. Um, let's see here. So we've got Spencer in today to, he's, he's a bit of a trapper. A little bit. A little bit of a trapper. Just a little bit. And you did some trapping this winter. I did. Me and Andy went out to the river and did a little bit of trapping. Yeah, they spent a whole week right before death week, um, yes. in the woods. And then Andy came back and he wished that it was death week because he's crazy. I'm pretty sure. He was like, why wasn't it negative 12 degrees when I was outside? I don't know. No. I don't think he said that. I don't want to be That's out there when it's negative 12. <laughs> that would not have been fun. But in any case, uh, Spencer has been around first your whole life. Yes. Yeah, because what does your dad do? He's a taxidermist. He's a taxidermist. So. He's not the best pro taxidermist, is he? No, he doesn't work with them. He does stuff for best pro. Okay, but he yeah. doesn't live in that building. No, he has that. his own building. He has his own. Building. He's so fancy. He has his own building. Yep. Yeah. So. All right, so Spencer has been tanning hair on hides. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that what that's considered? Are yeah. we tanning a hide? Yeah. Okay. Hides. Yep. So. so some fancy little native exotics. Yes. These are native exotics. Yeah. So he's been working up a couple and he's got some in some different stages and he's yep. just going to talk about it. So if you're at home and you're a trapper or you wanted to, or you've got some salted hides sitting in your freezer because you thought they were cool, I think he's going to tell you how you can get them from salted in your freezer to sitting on the couch looking neat. Yes. Deer cool. hides, whatever. Yeah, I whatever mean, you want to do. Bear hides, deer hides, rabbit, squirrel. Bear would be a lot. Bear is a lot, yeah. I, it wasn't a very big bear, but bear is a lot. Did you do a bear? I did do a bear. Did you get it? Was it your bear? I, no, I've never shot a bear. Oh. I wish. <laughs> that's expensive. Yeah, I think. Maybe I, in a few years in Missouri. There's bear season in Missouri. Is that, Isaac, is that what your friend did? Bear season in Missouri? He got a tag. He didn't shoot a bear, though? No. <laughs> I don't know. It was a few. All right. Well, we've got some beaver and some coon. Yep. So And, and we got them in some different stages. Yep. We're not going to show you guys all the gross parts. No. I I was like, Liz, I mean, I could, but I don't think a whole lot of y'all will like that. Yeah. So, so we're, we're doing this as PC as possible yeah. for those of you the out PG. there. Sure. PG as possible. Both ways. PC and PG. What is PC? Like, politically correct. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome, but you don't even know what that is. I don't. I Isaac don't always, it makes him feel better when somebody doesn't know something, too. Yeah. Did Isaac not know what that meant, either? I don't know. He struggles a lot. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Spencer, tell us what you got. Um. So, I got a couple different highs, a couple different stages here. That's right. Uh, first step, I mean, once you got your critters to skin it, of course, uh, each critter you skin a different way. Uh, coons, most of the time, coons, bobcats, coyotes, foxes, and any other animal similar to that tube is what they call it, whereas you cut in between the back legs. Okay. And you tube it out. So it's like a giant tube. How hard is it to, to, to get that off the, the critter? It's not hard. It's, it's not hard? It's a giant tube. Um, no. And you don't have to keep it. So you start at... The butt, the and butt. and you pull down to the head. Yep, and you okay. pull. You just pull. Well, not most of the time I just pull it all the way. Uh, make sure you get the tail too. The tail's always a pain in the butt, but make sure you actually skin that out so you know. um, And so then, you want to cut that all the way down the inside mm -hmm. on the bottom. Yep. Um, I use my fingernail, but there's tools you can use pliers, uh, tail strippers. Um, you don't cut all the way down it, and you just cut to the base of the tail, mm -hmm. and you grab it, and pull that skin. And then you go in with a knife and split it. Um, that's what I normally do. Uh, that's what a lot of people do. Well, so, okay, so, like, we sell fox tails here, right? Yeah. And they don't seem like they're split. It's they the tail. They probably are. They probably are? I guarantee you. And then they they're are. just, like, glued back together? No. Foxes have so much fur on their tail that they don't look back. Really? Yeah, they have a lot of fur on the tail, unlike where you can see them. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, like, if we went out and got one of it, like, the, the hide. Um, and then beavers cut up the stomach. You cut from the base of the tail all the way up under the chin. Skin it out like that. You can see and his little, little nosies. Yeah, you can see where his feet were. Yeah. So, and then. Um, That's probably my favorite fur is the beaver. Is a beaver? They're very nice. Most people take the guard hair off for, uh, you know, clothing and stuff, which is all this long stuff. They how just, would you take that off? I don't know how they do it. 
Oh, it's a mystery. Yeah, I don't know how they take the guard hair off, um, but the under fur is a lot more soft. Right, that's so, what they make hats out of, yes. is this stuff. Yeah, so they like take, my stetson. They take all this off. Yeah. yeah, that's what traditionally hats are made out of, is beaver. Yep. Yeah. So, because they're waterproof. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so, after you get your critter skin, do you want to flesh it, get all of the meat? Junk off of it. Do you use one of those big fleshing blades? Or I do. do you... Coons are really easy. You could literally just use a piece of flat angle iron as long as it has a square edge. Um, coons are really fatty and all that fat just pushes off. So I have a fleshing beam at home. Okay. Um, which is like uh, a big tube that sits up like so that you stand right here and you hang your hide over and you push down. So you're like sitting here like this, pushing down. And you get all that meat and fat. Off Almost like you're wringing out your laundry if you were to be hand washing it. Yeah, kind of, kind of. So you would. Look, you got one over there. I do. <laughs> so this one's inside out. And this one's starting to dry out too. Um, all right, that's creepy. This is a little creepy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if this was my flushing beam, my flushing beam is made out of a two by six that is shaped kind of, it's kind of shaped like a, a little spear point deal like this, and mm -hmm. nice and smooth and rounded over on the corners. And that would go up, you would slide your animal over it like this, and then you would use that as your support that you're pushing against. Just getting it, shoving all the meat off. What are you shoving it with? Uh, a fleshing knife. Fleshing knife. Uh, Alright, so he's inside out, you've got him on your... On your board, beam. on your fleshing beam, yes. and then you have a knife that you're working yes. the, the outside of the hide. Yeah, the inside okay. of the hide. Inside, right. Inside of the inside hide. Inside of the hide. Yes, because you want to get all the not skin stuff off. Correct. So, okay, the tunes are the easiest because everything just pushes off. You just... And, and you, yeah. like, when you're doing it, you know when you're done. Yeah, you can see the, the skin coming through. You can okay. see all the hair follicles on the inside. It's hard to tell on this one. But you can see it'll look somewhat like this, but not as white. Um, and you will, if you don't get it all off, it's not super crucial. But for coons, you want to get all the fat off because your hive will get oily and then it'll never dry. You don't get all the fat off. Gotcha. So it'll stay all oily and never dry right. I did one like that a long time ago. It, it's still not dry. It's you can just see oil. Weird. Yeah. All right. So not you got to get the fat out. Got to get all the fat out. Beavers are a lot harder. You will need a sharp knife for that because it's like cutting gristle off. So this one's, I got this one nice and clean. But, uh, yeah, this one's all nice and clean. That's pretty bright. Yeah, it's very bright. <laughs> That's the first bright. time I've been told that either. Johnny, you're so bright. <laughs> James, if you've ever pet a beaver, you would understand why you just don't, you, it, it's very nice to pet a beaver. It is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's why it's one of my favorite animals. Don't make fun of us for petting beavers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. Anyway. You just lay it over the couch. You just pet it every just, night just if you want it. to, right before, you, right while before you, you go to sleep. While you're watching a movie, you know. Yeah. Just set it on your lap. Um. Anyway. Yeah. So, all the flesh, everything off of it, as much as you can. Beavers are a pain on the butt. It took me forever to do this one. Um, and you're still, you're laying it over that beam, and you've got your fleshy yep, knife, and so you're just trying to work it. Lays work over it. the beam. I would have it. I would also take it, right. and then the the tip of the beam would come up, and then I would lay this over the top, and I would I have a, a apron that I wear, uh -huh. and you would push your body against it so it doesn't slide, and then this is my knife, and I would flush it like this, and it just shoves off. Okay. So, and then that's how you flush it. There's videos on YouTube of graphic. Yeah, I watched. I watched. I found a couple like TikTokers, I think, that had like a fleshing cabin or yeah. whatever. He had like, his his little yeah, tanning yeah, cabin. Yeah. With all the things, that was interesting. Yeah, you can also use power washer. You could use power washers with the orbiting bit, the little one that spins. And then you just, you would take it and you'd like put a nail on his nose on a board. And then you just power wash it all off. Interesting. Yeah. Can you do that with the the tube ones? Yeah, you could do that with that. You just have to flip them over. Um, coons are a little thinner on the hide on the bottom, so I don't know if they would tear it. Yeah. I wouldn't do it with a possum. Possums are like paper thin hide. Same with rabbits. Interesting. Um, but deer, beavers, you could probably do that with them. Uh After you get all that goodness off, you take it and salt it. Table salt works great. Just get yourself one of those things. Table salt. Salt it down. 
Um, leave it inside out, just like this. You would salt it once, really heavily, make sure you get every nook and cranny. And then lay it over. Like you're making beef jerky. Like you're <laughs> I don't know. Salt, sweet corn. I don't know. I'm just making things up. I've never made beef jerky. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I threw them off real good there. Uh, <laughs> and then you would hang it up on a, on a pole or something just like this, inside out, um, for 24 hours. Make sure you put a pan underneath it. Because what the salt does is it pulls all the moisture out of the skin. It just draws it up and then it drips off. So you'll have like a pile of blood water underneath it. And um, yeah, that uh, that also helps set the hair. Um, after that, 24 hours goodbye, you take it again, salt it one more time real heavily, and then you would roll it up like this, right side out it. This one's not salt. Um, but take it, right side out it, roll it up. So you're going to salt it, you're going to turn it right side out. Yeah, salt it again, turn okay. it right side out, roll it up like so, and then you can stick this somewhere and store it for eons. It'll be fine. So so th this is, so maybe can you, you store it before you start fleshing it? Like, can you salt it or just freeze it? You could you freeze it if, if you... If, if you go, you go trap your hide and yeah. you come back home. You just put it in the freezer? You could just stick it in the freezer and then you come back and flush it. If you salt it before you flesh it, when you go to flesh it, it's going to be a pain. You get all that off. It's all dry. Okay, so we don't salt beforehand. Don't salt beforehand. Okay. Make sure you get all that off, then salt it. If your hide, if you want the hair on, um, but your hair is slipping, like it's the skin starting to rot, you, you got greenness, the hide turns green and it's rotting, and the hair starting to pull out, don't just get the big chunks of everything off. Don't hardly touch it. Do the same salting process, and then let it drip, resalt it, and then you want this hide to turn hard. Once it turns hard, actually have one. This one's salted. It's not a. This is. I'm gonna get salt all over the table. Hopefully that's all right. Not. We got back in. This is a oh. mule, is a mule deer hide, but you can tell it is. You can't can't bend it. It's rock hard. Mm -hmm. So in this state, this would be fine. <coughs> ever and ever, I got salt all over the table. That's Sorry. fine. Don't worry about it. Um. So yeah, it's hard. Um, if your hide gets to this point and you're going to go pickle it, you gotta soak it up first. Um, if your hide is kind of pliable still, what do you soak it with? Just water. Um, I use water, uh, downy and dawn. Downy and dawn. Downy oh, and dawn. How, yeah. So how Not much? What's your ratio? You have a ratio. You wing it. I wing it. I just go splash dawn and I'm just a good little squirt of dawn or down. No, a splash of downy <laughs> and a, a good little squirt of dawn. So yeah, and the dawn really soft. Like okay, so like if you have if you have a bucket of water, yes, like a five gallon bucket. Okay, you have a five gallon bucket of water. You'd probably do a cap of downy. Cap of downy and, and a squirt a, of dawn. Like a two second squirt of dawn. Like and a, then like you, a do you mix it up. Yeah, just get in your hand in there. And, and then you just up. stick that in the bucket. Yep, and let it sit twenty four hours, and it should be all soft. Okay. Splash downy, squirt dawn. <laughs> mix it up. Hold, hold, please. Thank you. <laughs> We got salt everywhere. Alright, that's Yeah. The salt isn't gonna kill anybody, is it? No. Okay. It's just salt with a little bit of extra in it. <laughs> a little bit of extra yeah. with your salt. Yeah. Just throw it on your steak, it's good to go. Yeah. Uh but salting, salting, and then rehydrating if you need to. Um, if you don't have to rehydrate, or we'll go over pickle in a second. A pickle. Um, before you stick it in your pickle, you would want to rinse off all the excess salt off of it so that it doesn't get in your pickle and mess up your pH balance. Okay. Um, so, yes, after you salt, it's all said and done. It looks like this, except salted. So if you, let's say you go trap and you come back home. Yes. Which stage do you prefer to leave your hides in? Salted. Okay, so you like to get through all the fleshing. Yes. Get all that off. And then you're going to salt it once, let it drip. Yep. And then you're going to salt it again, turn it right side out. Roll it up. And roll it up. 
Yep, and it'll sit like this for however long. And then do you have do you have to refrigerate that or is it good? Nope, just stick it somewhere. Not too not super damp place, but because it won't ever dry out. But a drier place. Okay. And okay. then just let it sit there. That's and where as, we're at. And as long as bugs don't get to it, um my dad did have a moth infestation a while back. Right, they, right. Just, they destroyed a whole bunch of hives. They destroyed a tiger and uh, a mountain lion. And yeah, that was not fun. Those moths. Yeah, they destroyed a whole bunch. Uh, a tiger? Tiger. He had a, a, a gnaw dad in there. Yeah. Gnaw dad. That's oh, a bummer. Man. We don't, yeah. dad. We don't need How do you know? It was an albino tiger, too. Oh, boy. Yeah. So there was... That's not a good day for Dad. No, no. So, <laughs> yeah, we know some Mennonites around here that used to raise exotic animals for the zoo, and occasionally they would have an animal die of uh, natural causes or whatever, and they would be like, "Hey, you want this?" And he's like, "Sure." So that's how we got a whole bunch. So at least they were they were his. Yes. Okay. Yes, well, that's his. good. <laughs> it doesn't really make it better. No. No. It but doesn't. At least but... they weren't. They expected it. That I mean, that would have been real. That, that would have been a horrible phone. <laughs> I've Absolutely. made some phone calls in my day, but I never want to have to make that phone call. Yeah. So, All right. So, yeah. dry place. You don't need to bag it or do anything. like. No, you can stick it in a bag if you want, just so it doesn't get salt everywhere. Okay. That's why and and maybe no moths. And try not no moths, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you want to be extra safe, you could stick it in the freezer, but it's not necessary. Okay. Um. And then that can sit for as long as you need until you get to it. Yep. Yep. So, you could get a whole bunch of collection of hides and then make yeah. yourself a big pickle and throw it all in. Okay. That's um, a pickle. A pickle? Is a mixture of acid and salt that equals a pH of one. So you want to consistently make a pH of one. Um, my dad buys a specific taxidermy acid. Uh, that's not necessary. He buys it from McKenzie Taxidermy if you want to. McKenzie Taxidermy. McKenzie Taxidermy. Shout out to McKenzie and the taxidermy. Yep. Uh, but you can use citric acid. Citric acid. So uh, I've used citric acid before. You buy it at Walmart. It's okay. A, it's a powder. Um, and then... And then, like, for your pH testing, you just get, like, a... pH strips. pH strips. Just pH like, strips. for a fish tank. Yep. There we go. Yep. Um, for, uh... Yeah. You know, yep. If you want to... For, like, how much you're going to need. So, just for a beaver hut, I'd probably get at least just a five-gallon bucket. A one five-gallon bucket full, five gallons of it, for one hive. Uh, I could probably fit all three of these kinds in one bucket. Uh... My dad uses 55-gallon barrels, mm -hmm. so we just throw everything in there. But you don't want too much in there because it'll it'll change the pH so much that you'll have to, it won't be easy to keep balanced. So you don't want to add too much. Um, the mixture for it is, is three ounces of citric acid to one pound of salt per one gallon of water. One pound of salt per one gallon of water? Yes. So three ounces, three ounces of acid, one pound of salt per one gallon of water. A lot of salt, and that'll give you a pickle brine going. Um, and then you want to let that sit, let the pH even out to one. Uh, and then you throw your hides in there. How do you know when it's done changing? When the pH doesn't change for a couple days. For a couple days. Yeah. So the pH will fluctuate. It'll go. It'll go down, and then you'll have to add more acid because the hides soak in all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when the pH doesn't change for a couple days, you know your hides are good. And when it doesn't. Uh, have you can also cut it, and if it doesn't have like a bloodiness to it, you know, like when you get veg tan, there's that rawhide in the middle occasionally, that's super yes. thick stuff. So if you cut it, and it has that, but not rawhide, it has like uncured hide in the middle. It's not. Oh, you have okay. to let your your brine set before you put your hides into it. Uh, just till the pH levels out, so you get the pH right. So it could take a day or so. Okay, and then for how many days are you checking it? Like you put your hides in, stir it every, twice a day. You stir it twice a day, okay. and it's at least going to take three or four days. For you that. have like a wooden stick that you put in there. You can just mix it in there. Okay. Yeah, and then three or four or five days a week um, until they're ready. They'll plump up. The pickling helps with the. Uh, it like fluffs up the hide. Yeah, kinda. I remember at Herman Oak when we like it was like after. Well, they don't. They don't. They don't but it was after their deliming process, yeah. and the hide was all like spongy, oh, and, thick. spongy and fluffy. Yeah, this one might have bones. This one's really thick, so I ain't gonna have all a right. whole lot of that. Um, but it'll get spongy and fluffy and white, like this right here. You know, it's all nice and white and fluffy. 
nice and white and fluffy. Yeah. Number four. Um, yeah. All right. So you see how it's white? It'll turn white, um, like that, or like up here. This is a little dry, but hold, please. So. I zoomed in and now it's weird. <laughs> I use my beer brewing paddle to stir my hides. It's my secret ingredient in my beer. Would you see Michael's comment? <laughs> right, the next James. time my wife takes an Epsom salt bath, I'm going to ask her if she's pickling. <laughs> <laughs> so, alright. So, once your pickle's good, it'll turn this white color. This also makes it easier to flush. Um, so, I don't personally flesh the whole hide by hand. I have a machine that does it. It's it's like a, a, a table saw, so it has a blade that spins like this that's completely out of the table, but instead of having a sharp edge like this, it has a, a, a L to it. It has a sharp edge like this that rotates. Interesting. Okay? And then it has guides on it, so it looks like a, kind of like a, a skyver where it has guides where you only have to take out a certain much. And this is for thinning the hide, so you take your hide, you'd stretch it, and you'd run it across like this, and it would take little slivers of it off. So you kind of like here, and like you like pull it like this, yep, yep, as you run it across? Run it across, and that thins it out, evens out the whole hide. The thickest part are going to be the neck and head area on a coon. Mm -hmm. Beavers are just thick in general. <laughs> so that's almost, that's probably almost thicker than deer hide. Yeah. But it's really thick. So. Well, it's got a lot of hair to hold. It does have a lot of hair to hold. So. Uh, do that. If you don't have that, you can use a piece of PVC. And I'll show you how to do it. I got this guy that needs his, his face flushed. I always... Okay. You have to hand flush the face because you're not going to get a machine in there between the eyes. So. Yeah. Did you build your machine? Or did you buy it? Uh, we bought it. Okay. You have to buy it. I mean, I guess you could make one and I mean, you're pretty blades. crafty, so... I probably could, but you have to, you would have to buy the blades. Who, so. who makes the machine? Um... That's a good question. Uh, probably any Texas replacement. They're going to be kind of expensive. Yeah. So. All right. So on this guy, you can see all that good little wheat chunks and fat chunks and all that good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's real lovely. Yeah, it is. I skinned up the ears on this guy. That's not necessary. I just felt extra zealous that day and decided to do it. So I'm just. I have. I don't use a PVC pipe, but I have in the past. I use what they call a horn. It's it's a tapered. It's like a te it's a tape. It's a bit teardrop shape. So okay. It's, it's about this long, and it's about probably about two inches in diameter, and it tapers down to a point, and, and it's shaped as a teardrop. Right? Is it almost kind of like our our shoe, um, like the cobbler stands that we have here? Kind of, but it's but, round all the way. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then you can hold it in your hand. Um, so, and for everything I use, I use Havilon knives. So, for like razor scalpels. Oh, and that's a fresh one. And it's a fresh one. Havilon? So, Havilon. Can you spell that for us? I have no idea how to spell it. All right. Yeah. But you can look them up. The Bass Pro carries them. Okay. You can go in there. The, a, a lot of people knife. do for skinning, yeah. This one's not a folder, but they do sell folders. Um, so, I mean, and you're going to cut holes, of course, but you can see. I'm just going to, like, hold it down. A bigger pipe would be easier. This is all I have. But I'll try to keep it out in front of me. We're just going to take it. And just slowly take all that meat off. Well, it was tedious. Very tedious. A little easier with if you have a curve. You could heat this up and curve it, and it'd be easier. Heat it up and curve it. Yeah, like curve the pipe. So you're, oh. so you're not cutting straight. You're kind of cutting down. Oh yeah, that that does sound nice. Yeah, yeah, that it's, sounds better. It's a little more pleasant. But you see how how thick this is right here, and the thicker the hide, the harder it is to break it too. So, I mean, not... break it like as in work it to where it's pliable. Yes. So, not breaking horses, we're breaking hides. Breaking hides. For all y'all wondering, this is why tags are so expensive. I'm actually surprised it's not more expensive. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. But yeah, all this has to happen. You want to even contact term, but at least you want to even scan it. So it doesn't 
mouth on it. Right. And then you also have to go in and split the lips. Split the lips? Split the lips. Is that the nose? That is the nose. That's what the inside of the nose looks like. Weird. Yeah. yeah. Alright. So that's just cartilage. Oops. Ugh. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you ever do that on Beaver too? Huh? His nose. Uh, yeah. Flesh out the face, yes. It's, yeah. Yeah. Split the lips. And, well, you don't have to. You don't have to split the lips if you're doing this. Oh. Splitting lips is just taxidermy stuff. So if you split, oh, when it's two, huh? Split the lips is only when it's two. It is two. No, that's what I mean. Because the beaver is not two, but then you're not splitting lips. No, beaver. you split lips if you're gonna mouth. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. There you go. So yeah. Because I mean, if if you look at our lips, it's like skin on either side. So technically, this is skin. And this is skin, and there's meat in between that, and you want to split that all the way down to the lip so it's a flat piece of skin. If that makes sense. Uh huh. Kind of? Yeah. Yeah, because you know you have you like the inside of your cheek and the outside of your cheek. Uh huh. You gotta separate it. You gotta keep it separated. So, and then, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And then cutting holes and all that. Alright. Oh, and then after you get it all fleshed, you could. In theory, do this to the whole hide. You should do that if you want it. If you still have chunks on there and you got some thicker spots. So, um, and then once you get all that done, you have to put your tanning oil on it. Um, tanning oil, you can buy it online. Um, you could, in theory, brain tan it. Have to be picked with as well. Mm -hmm. Um. Could, uh, all right, so what is after after you pickle it and it's all fluffy and and that and then and then you can flush it and then you flush it, which yes. is like kind of fine tuning fine tuning all the getting everything off yeah. so it's still not tanned it's still not tanned it's just it's just cured you know okay, so almost like a wet blue situation yeah, yeah okay and then so after that happens, you can stick it back in your pickle and leave it. Once again, that's it's like it's like a jar of pickles. It's not gonna rot. Right. So you can leave them in there as long as you want, and they aren't gonna rot. They aren't gonna degrade. Oh, it's they gonna will, get better with. They age. will degrade eventually. You don't want to leave them in there for years, but they'll be fine for sure. a couple of weeks or a month or however. Okay. Um. So when you're ready to tan them, you pull them out, and you, since there's acid in here, you want to neutralize it. Right. Which is a mixture of baking soda. I think it's one ounce of baking soda per gallon of water. You mix that up, warm water so it dissolves. Mix that up, throw your hides in there, let them sit in there for 20, 30 minutes, just so all the acid is neutralized. If you don't neutralize your acid, acid will slowly eat away the skin, and then you'll end up with a ball of nothing. A ball of nothing. Except hair. <laughs> you'll end up with... A ball of hair. And then you can yeah. make yarn. And then you can make yarn if you want to. Yeah. Um... So only like thirty minutes, like it, that's all it takes to neutralize yeah. the acid. Yeah. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. There's not a lot. So of same acid. bucket situation. You mix it all up. You put it in there. Put it in there. Let it sit for twenty, thirty minutes. You put it in there like this, or it doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Okay. Uh, most most likely it's going to be like this because why turn it back inside why, out? Why turn it back inside? Out? Save time. Outside, in. Inside. The correct way. Yeah, right side out. Right side out. Yeah. Um. After that's done. You uh, after you neutralize, you can tan it. Then tanning can be you could uh, veg tan these. Oh, um, so that would be you know get your tannin from bark, leaves, whatever. Boil that, make the root, stick it in there. Um, How do you know if you have enough tannins? Uh, what do you mean? Like like if you're just going out collecting stuff from the woods and you boil it down how do you know if your mixture's good? um it'll have a color to it it'll it'll make like a tea ish color and the darker it is the uh the more tannins it's going to have oak, okay. oak is always a safe bet uh you can get it from the willow bar and a whole bunch of other places each one is going to have their own tanning qualities to mm -hmm. them have you ever veg tanned one i have yes i don't have that I have in the past. What does that hide feel like? Um, so it's going to give it a color. It's going to give it that woody earth color that the tanning that the solution is. Right. So it's going to stain your hide. Um, 
but it is it is a very nice tan. It, you do still have to break it or else it will become stiff. Uh, but it, it is very nice. It smells really nice too. It smells like wood. But it's still nice to see. All right. So you could do that. You could do that. Or you could brain tan is what you... Or you can brain tan, which and... is taking the brains of the animal. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about that before you get before to this part. You, yes. Um, putting it in a blender, you know, with a little water, you know. Make it a nice little. I've heard people do eggs too. You can do eggs and mayonnaise. And can you add that? Like if. So the theory is that every animal has enough brains to, to tan, tan its itself. Hide. Yes. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You just have to add enough water to. Yeah, to get, get it there to cover your whole hide. So and that's have you done that? I have not. I don't think I have clean toys. So that's what I did. Okay. Yeah, I've not brain tan. Uh, yeah, you could absolutely do that. People use eggs, egg whites. Mm -hmm. It's basically just adding natural fats back into the hide. Um, Apparently your brain is real fatty. Yeah. It, it, That's what I hear. It, it, all of it is <laughs> fat. Um, uh, you do that. And then the Indians, what they did was after they brain tanned it, they would they do call smoking it. They would smoke it. Mm -hmm. Was... They would take their hide and close up all the mouth, the ears, the legs, everything, and make a funnel going up the back here, mm -hmm. and then make a little smoke fire underneath it with a little funnel going, in, and all that smoke would come up through the hide, and what that does is it closes up all the pores in the hide, and it makes it waterproof. Interesting. Yeah. Have you smoked a hide? I have not. I want to, but I have not. It looks like you have some opportunities here. I do, yes. Uh, so, yeah. You could do that way. Um, the way I do, I just rub the tanning oil on it. You can get tanning oil from Bass Pro, Walmart, wherever. It's a little orange bottle. Mm -hmm. um, just lather that on there a healthy amount. Roll it up. Let it sit for four to eight hours. Four to eight hours. Not 48 hours? You could let it sit for 48 hours, but it's not necessary. Um, so you do that in the morning, maybe at, like before you come to work, and you come to work, and then you go home, and yeah. it'd be ready to finish out. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then after that happens, you have to wash the hide. Okay, so so you oil it, oil. right? Or you put whatever your tanning solution is on it. I assume tan it however you want. Right, but and then do you leave it like this, or do you roll it back up like I'll, that? I roll it back up like this. Do you turn it back inside out? Yeah, I would turn it right in, right, right, right side, side out. out. I can't ever remember right to get that right. Out. Right turn, side out. Turn it right side out. Roll okay. it up like this. And so that that way you're tucking in all those tanning solutions, yep, so, so that they can to penetrate. they can work, they can do their magic. Yeah. Okay. Just like that, let it sit. Four to eight hours, um, and then after that's done, then you would wash your hide, get all the just with clean water, uh, water and down and Donny, down and Donny, Donny, Don, Don and Downy, Don and Downy. <laughs> there we go, down and Donny. <laughs> I like down and Donny. So, that's a good. No, yeah, just how you soaked it up. Um, okay. Same amounts. Uh, wash it two or three times. So okay. what you do, you would make your solution. Put it in there, rinse it around real good. Let it sit for 20 minutes. That will help pull all the oils down. The Dawn will help pull all the oils out of the fur. It's really good at that. It's really good at that. You yes. should see the ducks from the oil spills. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you take it out, uh, rinse it twice so I'd get another five-gallon bucket with warm water. Rinse it out real good. Okay. Ring it. Is warm it. water like? Warm water, yeah. Everything helps. warm water? Everything warm water. It okay. always helps. Um, and it's just more pleasant to work with than cold water. Absolutely. Do you uh, wear gloves when you're doing this? Uh, Have you seen his hands? Mm -hmm. true. When I'm skinning and flushing them, yes. Yeah. Everything else, not really. You could if you want, if you're worried about Or the oils, the tanning oils. I always wash my hands. Or yeah. I put gloves on because I don't like cleaning oils off my hands. It's kind of weird. Um, that, that Dawn just doesn't quite get it. No. <laughs> if you want something really good, use fast orange. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Foxy has a question for you. Have you ever worked with a possum? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're thin. They're really thin and easy to tear. So they're hard to work with. Yes, because you can stretch it. Just rip the whole thing what is down. A, like, do you just, like, mount a possum? You just kind of turn it back into a... Uh, you can. Because, like, what are you going to do with a possum hide? I made a pair of boots out of possums one time. I lined the inside with possum. They were very soft. Interesting. They were very soft. Do and you still warm. have those? No, I don't. I was like 10 whenever I did that. You grew out of them a little yeah. bit? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I so like you can them. do it. 
Yep. It's just, you have to be real careful. Real careful. You, you'll rip pretty easy. Okay. Um, so then you just glue it back together. You can sew it. Yeah, that. So. Uh, I have another question. We'll see. Okay, so at what point, if you're mounting something and you're not, like, turning it into leather, leather yeah, yeah, yeah. at what point, like, do you have to go through this whole process still, or do you stop somewhere before here? Like, we're, we're to the tanning part. To the washing part. To the washing yeah, part. Yeah, the same same steps. Okay. Just, except, okay. of course, you keep the feet and you flush out the face more and clean it up more. Do a little bit better. Yeah, better of a job cleaning around the edges. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, getting that done. You do not mount possums. See, Dean, you can. You can. I, my dad would have a couple. Not a lot of people do them <laughs> because they're ugly. Because why? You know. I'm sure Bass Pro has a couple in there. They do. Yeah. yeah. See, if Bass Pro has it, everybody else should too. I don't know about that. All right. What's uh, next? Washing. Yep. Empty washing. Rinse them twice. Do that twice. So wash it twice. And then rinse twice in between each one. And then once you got it rinsed the second time, uh, I if I want it to go fast, I blow dry the fur. Okay. Um, just because the fur holds a lot of water. Blow dry it. I imagine Spencer in there with his blow dryer and like a little comb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can brush them too if you want. Um, and then after you get the fur dry, if you want it dry, you don't have to. You could just leave it out and let the fur dry naturally and then turn it inside out. So you let the fur dry like this, mm -hmm. except, you know, hang it up so all the fur dries. Yeah. Is there anything that you need to be concerned about with the fur up to this point? No. Not really. Okay. No. As long as, long as it didn't slip. Before the salting, you'll be fine. The fur ain't gonna slip at all. Right, but like just like keeping it like it's not gonna mat or anything. Yeah. No, it won't. Okay. Nope. Okay. Never had a problem. Um. So yeah, after your fur's dry or mostly dry, turn it back inside out. It won't look like this. It'll be more wider, like down here. Mm -hmm. Um. When it gets to this stage, you can see the color differences here. How it's like, see how it's dark lighter here. Yeah. You see how it's really light right here? Yeah, I feel like this is drier. Yes, this is almost and low. Dry. this is still pretty wet. Yes, because this is the next, this is very thick. Is this who you've been showing up to Luna all week? Or is it this? this? That was this one. Okay. No, that was that one. Okay. Yeah. Look, we have three here. Yes. <laughs> so, this one actually shot pretty low. Oh! Yeah. Came under didn't my see that coming, did Came it? under my deer stand and just, <laughs> he got it. He got it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, when it gets to this color, it starts drying out. You can really tell. I just get the kick out of that one. <laughs> I just know the rest of the Oh, yeah. It was like right, right before dark. She's sitting there. He came walk. <laughs> so, save a few turkeys. Um, so when it gets to this stage where it starts to change color, this is where you start breaking it and conditioning it. Taxidermy wouldn't do this. You would put it on the form wet. And when it dries, it will take its shape. If you don't do this, it'll turn hard. Um, but as you can see here, when I pull this, all that's going to change color. Oh, wow. You're pulling that pretty good. Yeah. So, see, it's all changing color. And that's breaking all the hair fibers, or the grain fibers in there. So, it only takes eight hours to tan the hide. Like, that is the, the, the tanning process the when you put the solution on it. Yeah. And then from, like... Do you need to treat the hide delicately before it gets to this point and it's tanned? Like, Not really. Is you it can, more can, prone to tear No, in the can, salting phases? No? You can okay. really, especially when you're washing it. So you can just give it okay. a good washing. I wouldn't take a, like, a sponge to the fur. You're just like right. really wash it. Okay. And then, yeah, you just stretch it out. So you're sitting there just watching TV and you're just pulling a hide. Yep, just, just pulling it. See? You can see it just, yep. it just changes color. It stretches a lot. It does. It does stretch quite a bit. I'm, so. I'm pretty amazed at how sturdy that hide is already. I don't feel like my hide is that sturdy. Maybe it is. <laughs> so. Have you ever tried to stretch your skin? <laughs> I, I mean, like, like whatever. I'm not going to do it. Here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pull on your I can only skin. imagine. Let's hear. How long do you feel it takes that wild smell to degrade to a decent level after the hide is tanned? Wild smell. I mean, I mean, you can smell it. Just it smells like tan. That is, that smells fine. That smells like it smells like downy, dawning water. In a little tanning well. 
and a little tanning oil. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't smell bad. Skunks, horrible. Don't ever do a skunk. Yeah, this is gonna be a good one. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's been real good. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, they never really smell. Skunks smell horrible. Unless you can get one, the only way to get a good skunk is for them to not have sprayed, which most of the time they spray. You got to shoot them in the heart. Them not spray. Most people shoot them in the head. They're crazy. They spray everywhere. And they go crazy. <laughs> they go crazy. So. You gotta, you gotta put them down real quick. Yeah. So. Do tan any fish? Uh, I've attempted fish. It's never gone too well. Uh. They do do it. They do do it. But I don't know on like an individual basis. There is people that have uh, veg tan fish. I've seen it on YouTube. They take salmon or whatever that they got from the store and they have veg tan. Um, they don't go through the pickling process. They just stick straight in the solution and hmm. do it that way. You will still have to break it, of course. Right. Because it will get still. Otherwise, you're just going to have a panel of fish. Yeah. And now, like... Aboard, aboard a fish. Yeah. It's, it, uh, uh, yeah, aboard. <laughs> aboard a board. Aboard a fish. Um, a fish board. A fish board! That sounds yummy. A fish chip. <laughs> um, in the tanneries that tan these hides out, they have um, a braking machine. It's like a big rubber wheel that spins like this. There's And there's just a plate on the bottom, and they would stick the hide in there, and that rubber wheel would mm. stretch it out, yeah. pull it, and they just go over the whole thing and do that. So that's how probably people that are doing this that are selling them for yes. money yes. going to be doing them. Yes. And I know people that have tumbled them before. Yeah. You get 55-gallon barrels with paddles that emitted 2 by 4s Little motor that turns it slowly. Um, fill it with corn cob grit, which is like ground up corn cobs. Throw it in there for 15 or 20 minutes, and it keeps the hide moving. And then you'd lay it out for an hour or so until it dries out a little more. You can throw it back in there, that just keeps it moving the whole time. And then you wouldn't have to do any of this. Cool. But yeah, the hardest part is around the face because there's not a lot to grab onto. So when you're working a hide, like, how long do you work it? Until it's completely dry. Like, and are you doing that constantly, or you do kind of do it like the the paddle method, where you work it for twenty minutes, let it dry a little bit more, yeah. work it for twenty minutes, let it dry a little bit more? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Just let it dry. So maybe if you're doing four or five, man, your hands are going to get tired. But if you, if yes, you have four or five of them, you yes. do one, and then you put it down, and yep. then you do the next one, you put it down, and then by the time you get back around, yep. the first one is ready again to be worked. Yep. Yep. Woo! You can also take them if you have a pole or something. Take them, wrap it around the pole, and just yeah, like, yeah, go to town. Put put some weight on it. And that'll break them real good. <laughs> uh, break it real yeah. good. I did that beaver this morning. Wow. Yeah. So I let him dry last night, and then he was really hard this morning. And so you put him on that pole. I put him on that pole and just went to town. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty soft. Yeah, that's pretty nice. He's still damp. He's still a little. He's damp. still drying. Yeah, but like if I haven't, if I don't work him now, he maybe won't. this is why everything smells like vinegar. No, they're playing on the coffee. Yeah, I was playing uh, the coffee okay. earlier. That's <laughs> so, like a vinegar smell. Brownsburg was asking where his company is. Well, Spencer works for Springfield Love and Company. Yes, yep. Spencer works here. Yep. Um, his his father is a taxidermist. Yep. And he also likes to hunt. Yep. And so I'll do birds. It's it's come naturally to him. He did. He was it a pheasant that you brought in? Yeah, I brought a pheasant. Yeah, he did a pheasant. Um, somebody asked about snakes, and I do know that you had taken Rusty had bought some really weird rattlesnakes. A while ago, and the I feel crust. like yeah, you yeah. have finished out some of those. But I have you ever done crust. a snake from start to finish? Nope, nope, nope. That also seems like it's delicate and yeah. hard to work with. It probably would be. You'd probably go except for those pythons that we just this dude. Did you see this guy? No, that big one. Oh, I seen it laying on the table. I was like, that's a big snake. It is pretty strange. That's a big old snake. That's a big is that old... a crust? Yes. It, yes. That's a big crust. Yeah, and he's like seven ounces thick on the side, which is the thickest snake I've ever seen. That's a big snake. The beaver smells fine. <laughs> it smells like a combination of dish soap, downy, and tanning oils. Tanning oils. <laughs> yep. It doesn't. It doesn't smell bad. None of these. There's no smell. No. No. There's really. There's. I mean, this guy is. It smells fine. It's not bad. It smells like a leather conditioner almost. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
So, I mean, yeah. and I use a lot of big four. You buy it by the gallon. Uh, I do buy it by the gallon. All right. So we're to the working, and then you just work it until it's dry. Yeah, anyway. I, I work it. Big soap. Work it. And then after, like, the initial break, I put some big four on it. Okay. Just lather it up, and then I let that dry. What do you mean by initial break? What does that mean to you? This was the initial break. Okay. So the first time you break it, it still has some damp spots. You could let that dry out first and break that. Um, but you can, it, it, it'll get kind of a crusty, papery feel to it. Mm -hmm. And even if you break it enough, it'll still, like right here, feel that. You see how it's like crusty, oh, yeah. papery feel? Yep. I think we've gotten some hides in that feel like that, yep. that are done. Hit it with some big four. Hit it with some big four. Big four works wonders. We love ourselves some big four. Yep. So, yeah. My dad figured that out a while ago. So, oh. Started doing his own. Clover, I told you guys that that one's mine. Are you taking that whole one? Yeah. I'm going to try to hydro dip it. The whole thing? No, not the whole thing. That would be ridiculous. I'm going to cut a section off. Okay. We've got some coming. We're going to, we got some coming. We will let you guys know next week. They Hopefully they'll be on live shopping next week. That's, that's the gist of it. And then you just work it till it's dry. Work you keep, it's can you over dry. bick for it? Um, I mean, I have never have. Okay. Might be able to, but it should dry pretty good. Yeah. So I don't think you can over. I do about two or three layers. Okay. So if I break it and it's all dry and it's still kind of that crusty feel, I hit it a couple more times. And that'll rehydrate the hide so you can break it a little more as it's drying with the big pour on it. Right. And that helps it make it easier. Nice. So. What do you do? What do you do with all your critters when you're done? I don't know. It depends. Deer make hides. A <laughs> make a puppet. Deer hides. I I just lay all my deer hides out. But uh, I have a couple coyote hides I did that I want to make a hat out of. That would be fun. Yeah, you could make a hat out of these. You make a hat out of these for your life someday. I'm not gonna wear it, but no. it'd be good. Breaking it is getting it close to a piece of meat. Yep. I did this to Luna yesterday and she didn't appreciate it. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. She didn't she didn't like Mr. Inside Out. Um she didn't, she didn't like, like Mr. On My Arm. No. She just wasn't a big fan of Mr. Coon in general. Yeah. I mean he does look pretty pissed off. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Okay. Yep. Liz sticking her hand up a raccoon butt. Mm -hmm. Seen it all. Seen it all. Why not? I like a good trash panda. The rocket's one of my favorite characters. I have haven't much fur, but he's pretty bald. Well, you know, he had a hard life. <laughs> if you watch the last, have you seen, yeah, the if last you watch one? the last one, you learned a little bit about Rocket's life, and um, it was sad. It was sad, and I cried. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, if anybody out there is trapping, or you thought about trapping. And you wanted to know, I mean, obviously we didn't go through it. There's plenty of videos on YouTube where you could watch it happen. But these are the steps. Mm -hmm. You can watch this 45-minute video. You'll get all the steps. Make sure you have all the product to start. If you ever get into a pickle, you can holler at Spencer here. And yep. he'll help you unpickle your pickle. Yep. Oh, and Unpickle your pickle. I don't know if Yeah, perfect, right. Liz. <laughs> Icing on the cake there. And whenever you throw out your pickle... Like, whenever yeah. you dump it out, make sure you neutralize the fork first. Just, They'll put the baking soda in the pickle. Just dump a whole bunch of baking soda in there. It'll make a bunch of... So go to Sam's soda. Club and buy the big, big bags of baking soda. Yes. And just dump all that in there, and it'll neutralize it. Um, Don't send acid into the, the universe. No, or out into your yard, because it'll kill all the grass. Yeah. yeah. Unless you do want that. Unless you do want that. Unless you really, yeah. And then you can have my driveway at home, where Chris's acid runs wild. Is etching time. acid? Mm. <laughs> My driveway is a rust bucket. It's not great. You can see it if you if you look at Google like you satellite, but like the whole driveway. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it's hilarious. Let's see here. How do you maintain fur, say in a coat, so that it doesn't get brittle? I mean, if you get to the, the if the, it doesn't have a lining, if he doesn't have a lining, you. Condition the inside, but there's nothing really you can do to the outside. Yeah. So just wear 
and yeah. tear will knock the door off. Like, if you're constantly touching it, it's going to... Don't if, catch your hides. If you go to Bass Pro and you see all the all the little taxidermy of animals, all their heads are bald because people go in there and pet them. Oh, that's an idea. And then they're all bald. Yeah. Their ears are bald or whatever. How do, like, I mean, obviously, keep the moths away because yeah. they're going to they're gonna ruin it. So no. as much as we hate the smell of mothballs, that's not a bad idea. Keep the moths away. Make sure you check it. I'm sure actually just, like, maybe not overly wearing it, but making sure that you are wearing it and using mm-hmm. it and not just letting it hang because that will, like, that will enhance the boardiness yeah. if you're not, if you're not moving. Moving around. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, if it's something that you don't use very often, if it's a coat that you don't use very often, take it out every once in a while. Have a little fashion show in your house. Yep. Do do some fun stuff. Um, make sure that you're moving the hide mm-hmm. so that it doesn't get boardy. Yep. And Marty Murphy had a question. Have you ever tanned deer hide without the hair to make wallets and other items? Um, I've attempted to. It's been a while. It's been a long time since I've attempted that. Um, do you we- use lime? I use lime. Mm-hmm. Just like farm grade lime, soak it in there, and that'll loosen up all the hair fibers, and then you can pull it off. Yeah. So, yeah, just lime, and then yeah. you go through the same thing. But if you do take the hair off, there's a membrane right at the surface of the skin that you also got to take off. Interesting. So, yeah. We we used to sell a DVD. I don't know if we still do. We might. That was like how to tan a deer hide with the hair off. It ran, we played it on the retail floor when I used to work on the retail floor, and I used to be able, like, I had it memorized for a few years, hmm. but it's been many more years since then. Yeah. So. Interesting. How about storage for Christmas stockings with fur cuffs? I mean, I just store them normally. I mean, there's nothing really special you should do to that. Because it's probably going to be funny. I'm gonna assume that's gonna be funny. Yeah. yeah. So it should be funny. Yeah, it should be funny. As long as it's dry rot. Dry rot's nothing to do with it. Yeah. You can condition it if you can't condition it. But a lot of people bring in hides and they're like, Can you fix this? And it's all dry rotted and you can like go like this and just tear it in half and I'm like, Nope. <laughs> can't do anything with that. Ain't fixing that. All right. Well, that's the show. Mm-hmm. So I hope you guys enjoyed getting to know Rockets 1, 2, and 3, mm-hmm. and Mr. Beaver. And Mr. Beaver. Mr. Beaver. Also, just FYI, if you are interested in a ridiculously huge python, we will have them for sale. Hopefully next week. We're working on it. It could be two weeks from now, um, but they'll be around $200 for a skin that is approximately six meters long, um, give or take, and then on average over a foot wide. Where did we get them? Mm, a guy. A, and, a guy. <laughs> yeah, so one of our vendors um, that we met in Dallas, he, like we were just talking, he does exotics. That's what he does. He has a manufacturing plant in Mexico. He makes a lot of, like, belts and wallets and, and, and goods like that. Anyways, and he's like, I have this palette of python skin. I don't know what to do with it. The scales are a little bit funky. Like, the scales aren't perfect. They're they're kind of coming up in places. Um, They're not number one grade, which he's like, I can't use them in anything. He's like, but I have a palette of them. And I was like, send us one. Yeah. Uh, and so he did, and they're cool. Like, even if you just want to hang it up in your shop, it's going to, like, they're pretty cool. number, like, 20 feet long. I did my math yesterday wrong, and I'm going to do it today correctly. Approximately 20 feet long, and, like, 12 to, I don't know, 18 inches wide. They're wide. They're huge. Cool piece. You could probably make some sort of a tote bag with it, and just fold the thing in half, and have the whole body as a tote bag, because they're hefty enough to do it. It's not going to tear. Um. It's a pretty cool piece of a snake. So anyways, if anybody's interested, I think he had a little bit over 50 of them. I think we're going to take all of them because they're just stinking neat. And yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, so that's, yeah. I'm excited to see them. If you're interested in anything like that, check on live shopping um, and then maybe even the website because we'll probably get enough to make a, a special offer listing. So yeah, it'd be great wall hanger. And for 200 bucks, like, it's a great deal. For, mm-hmm. for that big of a python. Yeah. That's a giant python. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Denny will be back with us next week. Um, and we are going to start what I'm calling the Saddlebag Saga. Um, he's going to start kind of showing us different options for different versions of Saddlebags for 
um, horse, horse saddlebags, not motorcycle saddlebags, the, the equine version of the saddlebag. So, what steps does one have to do for sewing? Uh, you need a needle and a thread and time. For these guys? Like sewing. Are you like sewing up holes here or just sewing that? Because that is, that's not going to break any needles. There's no bones in it. This also probably just you just do like a just like a, a, a whip stitch. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I'm glad I did get your email. I sure did. It's been a busy morning. Say bye, Liz. Bye, guys. See you later. Have a good weekend.